Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Lisa Cunningham. I'm with Mid Atlantic Farm Credit. I work out of the East New Market office covering Dorchester County, Caroline County, and Talbot County. Um, and I'm just going to go over kind of what our farmers are facing. A lot of you are in the business, so you know um, some of this is going to be a little bit repetitive from what Nate was talking about, what Jenny was talking about, but just trying to give you an idea of what we're seeing as lenders um, and the impact that that's having on our farmers and the stress from that that it's causing. So I probably don't have to tell you, um, you know, we had significant losses from 2018. Uh, many grain farmers have lost anywhere from 100,000 to 250,000 or more, depending on the size of the operation. Many vegetable farmers have lost 250,000 plus um, from 2018. Uh, many are having to refinance that loss or do full on restructures of the current loans that they have plus the loss. Um, and right now we're at a higher interest rate than we were years ago. So it's not like, it's like, okay, it's bad enough you have the loss, you have to refinance it. Well now if they refinance, their interest rates are higher than what they were. So it's an increased cost to them for that as well. It will take many farmers at least seven years or more to pay off the losses accumulated from 2018. If you think about it, $100,000, $250,000, that's a house. How, how long does it take a person to pay a house 30 years 20 years so I mean these farmers it, it, this last year they're going to be digging out of that hole for years to come so it's not just like okay last year's over we've we've done what we're, we need to try to do to try to you know get that out it's going to be years to come before they um, get out of you know the loss from last year so it's significant so like Jenny was talking about, there's uncertainty in our grain industry, there's uncertainty in our poultry industry, definitely in our dairy industry, but I'm going to talk more about what we see in this area on the shore. There's typically not as many dairies on the shore. There are still some that exist, um, obviously, but there, it's not the um, majority. Um, so I'm going to just be talking about grain, poultry, vegetables, that's kind of like the majority of what we see. Um, in the other areas, the farm credit lenders will be talking about dairy and, and other industries that they see. Um, so for our grain and our poultry industries right now, low commodity prices, extreme weather, the extreme rainfall that we got last year that's seemingly continuing into 2019. All the while they're facing higher input costs, more regulations, uh, longer layouts as Jenny said. So right now up to 65 day layouts, which was eight weeks. Usually you have a six week bird or a seven and a half week bird. So they're out longer than they've got birds in the houses. Um, and the poultry companies, as Jenny was saying, they're at capacity, so that's limiting the farmer's ability to be picked up. So if they've got dropped for whatever reason, in this area we've had so many poultry companies that typically if you've got dropped by a company, you could always get picked up by, by one. Or if you wanted to switch, you always had that flexibility. Right now, the poultry companies are at capacity, so that's, that's like non-existent right now. Um, and typically also for the grain and poultry industries, you know, farmers, they're, they're very innovative, so they've always diversified. Um, so it's like, okay, I'm in the grain industry, I'm gonna diversify into poultry. I'm in the poultry industry, I'm gonna diversify into grain, so if one's not doing good, I've always got the other. Right now, they're both down. I had a farmer in my office yesterday that said, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know, and he's been one that, you know, doesn't worry about a lot, we'll figure it out. Well, he's worried because he's in the poultry and grain industry. Right now, he's had two flocks, He's been out eight weeks for two flocks. So he had an eight week layout, had a flock, has another eight week layout, had another flock, and now he's going for another eight week layout. And he can't make, he's got his money in there for his March payments, but he's not gonna be able to make his June payments. He also didn't get his wheat planted from last year in all the rain. He only got 90 acres of wheat planted. He usually plants 200. He's got two semi-annual payments due in June. How's he gonna pay that? He didn't have as much wheat as he has the previous year. So. That's kind of what I'm talking about when I'm saying uncertainty in the grain and poultry industry. They're, they're facing a lot. Um, if they've always counted on the one, now that's gone. Uncertainty in the vegetable industry, same thing, extreme weather. Um, volatile markets for them as well, definitely high input costs for them, definitely more regulations. And they have little to no availability for crop insurance. So, I mean, at least in grain, you do have the availability for crop insurance. A lot of guys got hung up though because they, you know, they went catastrophic coverage for the irrigated ground. Um, so they lowered that. And last year, I mean, 
you couldn't take the water off. You know, you, you can, okay, for a drought, you can put water on with irrigation, and that's how they've always mitigated it before, but you can't pump water off on the field. So a lot of guys got hung up with that, but at least they had availability for crop insurance. Your vegetable industry, there, there's little to no availability for crop insurance, and you have so much more higher input costs. The risk is so much greater. So that's hit a lot of our vegetable farming um, industry right now. And nothing's really changing, so we've still got low commodity prices from uh, 2018. I'm not looking for that to change any. Um, still extreme weather. I mean, this, this rainfall that we just got, I mean, there's just, you see water laying everywhere. The guys who are starting, you know, think about planting peas this time of year or spread fertilizer, they can't get on their fields. Um, Long layouts, we don't know when that's going to change. You know, there, there's uncertainty in that. And there's, there's a lot that are still trying to come up with a plan to figure out what they're going to do with their loss in 2018. So with all the rain, we had a later harvest um, than usual. So there are guys still out in their fields trying to get stuff harvested in December, early January. Well, then they didn't know what their numbers looked like because they usually have all that figured out by November, December. Um, so that's delayed everything kind of behind. So they're still reeling from 2018, trying to come up with a plan. Also, all the while trying to figure out what they're going to do for 2019. So all of that, <laughs> not to be a Debbie Downer, but all that, I mean, it is, it's definitely bringing worry. It's definitely bringing anxiety. It's definitely bringing fear, and I see that. Um, I don't have to tell any of you guys that. You see it too. So, I mean, they do. They fear for, to lose their homes, their land, their livelihood. Um, what's going to happen next? What if this year's like last year? I mean, I know how last year's affected me. So, what if this year's the same as last year? And just like, I mean, they said before, all of these things are outside of their control. They could be the best farmer in the world and can't control the weather, can't control the, the low commodity prices. Um, so, all of those things. Are our farmers reality right now and going into 2018 and beyond. Um, agriculture is cyclical in nature so it, it does tend to be you have a, t a period of, of good years, you have a period of bad years, so now we're going into a period of bad years. Agriculture has seen this before so I don't want to be you know totally Debbie Downer um, and we have I, I think we work with some of the best people in America. Our farmers are some of the best and strong people in America but that being said they are facing a lot um, and it is very stressful and some of them have never faced this before. So what can you do? <laughs> I'm not really going to speak on the emotional side of things. You know, there will be speakers who can talk about that later on. Um, but from a financial standpoint, since that's where I'm at, if you are talking with a farmer, dealing with a farmer, know a farmer who is dealing with financial stress and doesn't know what to do, these are some steps that they can take to uh, mitigate that. And, and if they're worried about reaching out, if they're worried about making contact, please try to um, calm their fears of that. Like we, especially Farm Credit, we, we, we try to take a poll of what's going on, you know, so that we know. So that phone call is not going to be a surprise to us. We know it was a bad year. We know there were losses and that's why we were set up. Um, to help them. I mean, that's why Farm Credit was there to, to help them in, in the bad times as well as the good times. So if, you're, if you know somebody or working with a farmer who's dealing with a financial stress and you don't think, you know, they've contacted anybody and they're just really, you know, hanging on to it and don't know what to do, these are some steps, steps that you can go through with them and, and let them know. Um, so the first one, obviously, is to recognize their financial stress. If they're worried about it, they've probably already recognized it. So the second one's a huge one is to call and communicate with your lender or whoever you owe money to, whoever they owe money to, to let them know, um, hey, you know, I've had a loss, it's been a bad year, just letting you know what can we do. Because the, the sooner we know that, the more options we have and the more time we have. Time is key. We only have a certain period of time after we have the delinquency before we can do something. So the sooner they call and let us know um, what's going on, the better. And then after that, we're going to work with them to diagnose why there's financial stress. Sometimes it's obvious, you know, you've got longer layouts, you've got low commodity prices, but other times it's not as obvious. So we're going to work with them to identify why there's a financial stress, going to get them to gather some information for us, and then we're going to sit down and work out a solution together, try to figure out how we can, how we can um, you know, either if it's a loss or whatever it is, how we can work that out to get them in a place where they can move forward and then ride out the down, down cycle. Again, agriculture cyclical. So we're moving into a period of um, some down years. So they've got to know that you know, they, they need to change up some things to be able to ride that out. 
Any questions? Any comments? Anything like that? That's what we're seeing. That's what our farmers are, are dealing with. That's what our farmers are facing. Um, and it is a lot. It's a lot for anybody to deal with. Um, so just, just know that and understand that and, and try to help them as best you can. And as people who are seeing this, it's not easy for us either. Um, so don't forget about yourselves too. It can be hard to deal with and, and to work with, especially since we develop relationships with people. You know, we see these people year in, year out. We see their families, we, you know, so it can be hard for us to watching all this happen. So don't forget about yourselves as well.